The first three books of the New Testament are called synoptic gospels. Synoptic means the same view, and these authors are the two or three witnesses required by the law to establish corroborating testimony. See Deuteronomy 19.15. But even though these first three biographies of Jesus have similarities, they have interesting differences. In fact, 42% of this book is unique to Matthew. For one thing, Matthew is very interested in the Gentiles, who will flock to the Lord Jesus when his own people reject him. He alone tells the story of the wise men worshiping the king as a child and of the Lord sending his disciples to the Gentiles, chapter 28, verse 19. Only Matthew records the Lord's statement to the Canaanite woman, O woman, great is your faith, chapter 15, verse 28. And only he talks about Christ building the church, chapter 16, verse 18. For another thing, Matthew is the link between the Old and the New Testaments. More than 120 Old Testament references are in Matthew. There we hear about Abel, Noah, Abram, Jacob, Moses, David, the Queen of Sheba, and Jonah, among others. Jesus believed they were real people. We should too. Matthew wrote his account to explain how he, a monotheistic Jew, could become a disciple of the man who declared himself to be God. But if Jesus was the Messiah, why did he fail to establish the eternal kingdom? That's a good question, and Matthew isn't afraid to deal with it. See chapter 11. In fact, Jesus has initiated the kingdom, but in mystery form, as explained in the parables of the kingdom in chapter 13. The first verse in the book provides a table of contents. The Lord is called the son of David, the son of Abraham. David's son Solomon was given a throne, and the first half of the book until the Lord's rejection in chapter 12, presents Christ as king. But Abraham's son Isaac wasn't given a throne. He was given an altar. And in the second part of the book, the Lord Jesus makes his way to Calvary, the same place where Isaac was offered. Following the introduction of the king in chapters 1 to 4, the book is divided into five subdivisions. Each section concludes with the phrase, when Jesus had ended these sayings. Each section includes a major sermon. Civilization records the long search for some form of government that can solve the needs of the human heart. All have proved failures. Now this person laid claim not only to being the Jews' Messiah, but to being the ruler of all people and the arbiter of what's right and wrong, seen in his ten famous, but I say to you, declarations in this book. Thankfully, he not only set God's standards, but proved himself able to forgive sins as well. Many kings established their kingdoms by the shedding of other people's blood, but this king established his by the shedding of his own blood. What a king! What a savior! What a world awaits us when he reigns over all! And that's a scripture snapshot of Matthew's Gospel.